Good morning, good morning, good morning, folks. Welcome to the QT Bible Study with Steve Levitt. I am Steve Levitt. I don't know why that... Um, let me see if I can get good... <laughs> wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey. Good to see everybody this morning. I don't know why... I don't mean for that to look the way it looks. So, um, TikTok, we got a funny thing going on. Uh, and I don't know what to do about it. So I'm going to look like I have a spray tan, I guess, this morning on TikTok. I don't know. I think there's a way to make it not do that, but I haven't figured out what it is. If anybody knows, let me know. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Justin, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Good to see you this morning. Um, Give me a uh, audio video check. Let me know how the audio and video are this morning. Uh, we're always trying to figure out. <clears throat> We've got a few more days where I can be over here at the main house uh, where I have good Wi-Fi. Then it's back to figuring out what we're going to do uh, whenever I have to go back, uh, not at the main house. So um, good to see everybody this morning. Yolanda, Stephanie. Uh, Lola, I still can't see your name. You got to change your settings in the blue uh, link above in the paragraph that says streamyard.com slash Facebook. Uh, so I can see your name, Casey and Clarissa. Good morning. Another Facebook user. Good morning. I can't see you, Sarah. Good morning. Audio is good. Video is grainy. Uh, hmm. Audio off, visual blurry nancy you may need to turn your volume up i think just fuzzy you know i'm just right here the wi-fi is just right there i don't get it don't understand it is what it is though uh, i guess i'll have to be inside TikTok can see me fine audio is good uh, i'm actually really cold uh Maybe we'll try it inside. You have a little clearer. Hang on a second. No, we won't. <laughs> that door's locked and that hey, we can walk around. Uh audio's good, video sketchy. Not not okay. All right, hang on. Hold the phone, hold the phone. We're going to go. Like this. Oh, there goes a Miller bug. Two nights ago, we went to bed and about 75 Miller bugs were in our camper. We don't know how they got there. We don't know what happened. And uh, we fought moths all night. It was actually pretty comical. Okay. There's Mama. Good morning, my dear mother. Good to see you this morning. We're going to make this work right here. All right. Hello, Mama. Good to see you this morning. Going on a bear hunt. Trumping through the forest. All right, now give me an update. How is that Wi-Fi? How are we doing with that? We call them Miller bugs. Uh, they're the moths, just the little a moth. Miller bug. I don't know. They're, they're just a moth is all that is. Uh, yeah, they, they're, they're comfortable with us. We're kind of helping take care of their property while they're not here and everything. So, uh, good morning, mother. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Good morning, TikTok. Good to see you guys. We are in the Song of Solomon. Uh, uh, let me know. Somebody tell me if the video is better here. Video and audio is better. Yes or no? Yes or no? Uh, let me know. Song of Solomon, chapter two. 
Song of Solomon chapter two, we'll pick up audio good, video is still sketchy, but a little better, Steve. How weird is that? I'm sorry, guys. We just got to take time to keep messing with this. I want to find the best. Mm, that's not going to get any better than that. I don't have any better than this. So seems good to you. All right. Here we go. Song of Solomon chapter two. If you want a free Bible, go to the link in my bio or go to hopeshinesministry.com. That's our website, hopeshinesministry.com if you want a free Bible, and we'll send you a free Bible. Fill out the little form on there, and uh, we'll send you a free Bible. No strings, no follow-up emails and phone calls. It's just that. We send out free Bibles. People donate to hopeshinesministry.com. We use that money to send Bibles out. That's our ministry, one of our ministries. So uh, no strings attached, no no tricky. We'll just send you a Bible. Uh, Zanath, you've been dismissed. You can stick around and learn if you want to, but if not, Zanath, then, uh, <laughs> then you can be dismissed. Uh, yeah, the trolls have found TikTok again. Song of Solomon, marriage, love, sex, and dating and romance and, and marriage. Here we go. Verse 8. Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 8. Middle of your Bible. Old Testament back there. Find the Song of Solomon or the Song of Songs and go to chapter 2 and verse 8. Hey, Dan. All right, brother. We'll see you. So here we see Solomon and Shulamite dating. Uh, they've, they've, they've found each other. They like each other. And they're going to go on a date. Let's watch them go on a date here. And what does it look like for Christians to go on a date, I guess, uh, for, for children of God to go on a date? Here it is in, in verse 8. Um, all right, y'all ready to go? I think we've got everybody. Verse eight, listen, my beloved. This is Shulamite talking to herself. She's kind of, kind of just daydreaming, talking to herself again. And she says, listen, my beloved. Listen, my beloved. She hears him coming. Behold, he's coming. He's climbing on the mountains. She sees him as a superhero, superpowers. He's climbing on the mountains. He's leaping on the hills, hilltop to hilltop to hilltop, like Superman. That's how she sees him. He's climbing on the mountains and leaping on the hills. She says, my beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag, a stud. Behold, he is standing behind the wall. So she sees him at a distance coming to get her for a date, right? He's coming to, to sweep her off her feet and sweep her away, and and she he first she first sees him, hears him, then she sees him off in the distance, leaping over the hills, and then behold, he's behind the wall. He's right here. He's right around the corner. He's behind the wall. Behold, he's standing behind the wall, and he's looking through the window, and he's peering through the lattice. Where is she? There she is. Oh. Right. And she's excited. She likes that. He, he's getting closer. Now he's he's looking through. He's 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 creeping a little bit. Right. But she likes it. Verse 10. My beloved responded and said to me, arise, my darling, my beautiful one, and come along for behold, the winter is past. The rain is over and gone. The flowers have already appeared in the land. The time has arrived for pruning the vine, and the voice of the turtle dove has been heard in the land. He invites her on a date. He says, come on, come along. Behold, come along. Come here, my, my love. I'm excited. 
I'm uh, there's a there's a new freshness in the air. There's a newness of the air. There's there's a uh, 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 this uh, flowers have are, are starting to bloom in the land. Uh, the the turtle doves have showed up. It's time to prune the vines, which means it's springtime, right? It's it's when whenever the dead of winter, the 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 blah and grayness of winter is gone. Much like right now, it's springtime. And everything's coming to life and blooming just like our love. That's the, that's the metaphor here. He's saying in the metaphor that it is springtime in our love. There's a newness to our love. The, 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 the blah gray of loneliness is over. The, the, the uh, nothingness is over and it's springtime. And that's what I feel about you. That's what I'm excited, excited about you is that we get to enjoy each other. Now, uh, I'll share with you a little bit of what we know about marriage, dating, love, sex, and marriage. There's this season in a relationship. This will be good for you guys. Hang on and, and follow me on that. There's this, let me, let me show you the timeline of a, uh, uh, two people who spend a lifetime together. They meet. It's exciting. It's springtime. They date. It's exciting. New life. Uh, we call this infatuation. You're infatuated. You're you're highly in love. You're you're obsessed with that other person. You can't get enough of them. You love them. You're you're so excited about them. You, you're ooey gooey for them. You're aroused by them. Sexually aroused by them. everything about them is. Uh, super intense. That's called the infatuation stage. All the way up till we're, we're engaged, we get married. And then we go about two to five years into marriage, somewhere between two, two to five years or until the first child is born. Typically, that infatuation stage is, is two to five years or until the first child is born. And then the couple hits the wall. It's what we call the honeymoon is over. You no longer feel infatuation. Whenever you're infatuated, by the way, your brain is releasing endorphins, this chemical that's euphoric, this chemical inside your body that makes you feel euphoric and excited, uh, like taking a drug. It's exciting and thrilling, and, and you have super intense feelings and euphoria towards that other person. That's normal. It's healthy. It's what draws you together. It's what binds you together. And then you hook your hooks into each other and you get married. And now uh, the new wears off three to five years, two to five years or after the first child. Then that wears off and you hit a wall. And the couple is standing there looking at each other going, hmm, I don't feel about you the way I felt about you at first. I don't have this euphoric feeling towards you anymore. I'm not as sexually a women. Typically men stay pretty sexually aroused, but women will lose their sexual arousal. They're not, you know, all excited to go have sex all the time. Men aren't as quick to write you a poem or bring you flowers or romance you, pursue you, trying to get their hooks in you and get you loyal to them. All that wears off about three to five years or after the first child. The honeymoon is over. Euphoria is gone. By the way, if you want a free Bible, go to the link in the bio, fill it out. We'll, we'll send you a free Bible. The euphoria is gone. The excitement's over. And um, you're stuck there. This is where couples come into my office pretty often. I get this pretty often. The honeymoon's over, the euphoria is gone, the, the endorphins are gone, the infatuation is gone, and they look at each other and go, you know, I, I love you, but I'm not in love with you, I think. Or, uh, um, you know, you're, you're my spouse, but that person really excites me. See, that person switched to someone else to get that euphoric feeling, that, that infatuation, because you don't do it for me anymore. 
that person makes me feel the way you used to make me feel. So that person is the person I must need to be with. That person is the one who uh, uh, trips my trigger. That person um, uh, over there uh, um, must be my soulmate because you don't, I thought you were, but you're not really, right? But you're not, you don't really make me feel that way anymore. That's where affairs start, is after the, the newness wears off. Well, they are in the midst of infatuation. They're in love. They're going on a date. She's all excited. He's pursuing her. He's romancing her. He says, let's go. It's springtime excitement. Verse 13, Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 13. Solomon says, uh, She's still saying out loud, um, she's still saying to herself, the fig tree has ripened its figs and the vines that are in blossom. The vines that are in blossom have given forth their fragrance. Arise, my darling, my beautiful one, and come along. She's saying what Solomon is saying to her. He's saying, arise, my darling, come out of the house. Let's go on a date. He just texts her and says, hey, let's go. Let's go grab a movie. Let's go. Let's go to coffee shop let's let's go walk in the park so it's a date they're all excited so he shows up knocks on the door opens the door he shows up and he says to to shulamite maybe they're at the park by now maybe they're next to a lake away from everybody else no one's around there's a blanket down they have a little basket of of bread and wine uh, you know, and they're eating their dates and apples, laying on one arm, you know, the whole scene there. Maybe that's where they are. And he says to her, he looks her in the eyes. He looks her deep in her eyes, right? And, and he's, he's, he's overwhelmed with her. He's so in love with her. And he's, and he's looking her in the eyes. And he says, oh, my dove in the cleft of the rock, my dove in the cleft of the rock in the secret places of the steep pathways. Let me see your form. Let me hear your voice. For your voice is sweet and your form is lovely. The brother is laying it on thick right here, right? He says two important things to her. And this is where couples fall in love. This is where you fell in love with your spouse probably, is whenever these words these concepts were given back and forth. He says to her, first of all, oh, my dove in the cleft of the rocks. What is a dove in the cleft of the rocks? Think of a, a hillside and there's rocks, right? And there's a dove up in the, the, the a, a nook or a cranny uh, in, in the rocks. Why would a dove go in there? A dove goes in there for safety. A dove goes in there because a hawk will come down and eat it or a a, 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 a a lion will jump up and grab it. Well, it's safe. It's safe. She's 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 in the cleft of the rock. She's a dove in the cleft of the rock, in the in the nook of the rock, where it's safe, hidden from everybody, away from everybody. Maybe you're this person who hides. Maybe you're this person that doesn't like people, doesn't want to be around, doesn't want a relationship because it's in the rocks. It's kind of lonely. It's kind of cold, it's kind of dark, but you're safe. Maybe that's you. And he's saying, Shulamite, come out. Oh, my dove in the cleft of the rock, secret place of the pathway. Let me see your form. Come out. I'm safe. It's Solomon. Remember, it's me. I'm safe. He's inviting her to feel safe in his presence, not relying on the rocks for her safety. Rely on me for your safety. Men, this is at the top of the list. One or two, number one or two. Things that your wife needs and, and what will attract a woman to you. If you're not an emotionally safe person, if you're not emotionally stable, She's not going to come out of the rocks. She may, she may go with you because you've got a lot of money or you feed her or, or, or uh, you know, her friends are telling her to. She may go with you, 
but she's not going to feel safe until you are emotionally stable, until you are someone that proves your safety to your wife. Ladies, you're trying to catch a man or you're trying to be attractive to your husband. How safe are you? How safe are you as a spouse? Are you a safe spouse? Do you create, create safety for your husband? Does he believe and trust that you will talk well of him to other people? Does he believe and trust that you are loyal and faithful? Does he believe and trust that you will speak kindly and respectfully and honorably towards him? Or are you going to rip his heart out with your words? Are you going to, are you going to spit on him with your, your facial expressions? Men, is she going to be safe with you? Are you going to be tender with her, careful with her, gentle, gentle with her? Are you going to protect her, her precious, fragile little heart and what you say and do? Are you going to look at other women, pursue other women and break her heart? Solomon knows that she needs safety. And he says, come out of the cleft, out of the secret place, the steep pathway. Come on, my dove. I'm safe. Let me hear your voice. And your voice is sweet and your form is lovely. So she came out. He says, I can hear your voice. I see your form. And he liked it. He liked her form. Men, I hope you like your wife's form. Whatever it is. Maybe it's kind of big and round. Maybe it's a, a board. Maybe it's just curvy in all the right places. Who knows? Whatever it is, whatever God gave you, ladies, as a form, I hope your husband loves it. There's no right form. There's no too big, too little form. There's no body that's just, just right. It just needs to be right for your husband. That's all that matters. Doesn't matter what the other girls think. Doesn't matter what the world says. Doesn't matter what uh, Vogue magazine says your form is supposed to look like. What matters is does your husband love your form? Stop. Stop. I'm going to say something here, ladies. The one thing that matters about your form is what your husband thinks. What destroys women's ability to feel free in their body is a woman caring what the world thinks about their form and not caring what their husband thinks about their form. The one thing that matters is usually there. He loves your body. He loves your butt. He loves your boobs. He loves your body and he wants it. He desires it. That's the one thing that matters. And oh, if you could just let yourself feel as good as your husband does, you would do great. But instead, ladies deny what their husbands think about their bodies and, and put all their eggs in the basket of the world or what even you think about your body. And so you feel awful about your body. Because you put your eggs in the wrong basket. You've decided this is what I'm going to judge myself by. Rather than the one thing that God says matters the most. Your husband's opinion about your body. Accept his praise of your body. Accept his love for your body. You have what he wants. <coughs> You have everything within you that you could offer him. I'm just saying. If you want to feel good, then, then pray today. Take time for you to pray today to God and say, thank you for giving me this body that my husband loves and help me to give it to him. Help me to offer it to him. According to first Corinthians seven, my body is not my own. It's my husband's. His body is not his own. It's mine. <laughs> Marriages would be so much better if we could live this way. 
and stop caring what the world thinks and start caring what our spouse thinks. Instead of going, oh no, I'm fat. No, my boobs aren't big enough. Oh, I got a big butt. You know, oh, my feet are ugly. Oh, my skin doesn't look good. Men, if you want her to do what I just said, you better make her feel safe. You never, never, never talk negative about her body. Never. You never make her feel insecure and unworthy about her body. You want to really destroy the intimacy of your marriage? Criticize her body. You're done. She's done. It's, you'll never be safe. You'll never be safe if you're critical of her body. Amen, ladies. Can I get an amen? Let me share with you. Here's this couple, lakeside, on a blanket, no one around. He's the king. He can have what is want, have what he wants. They're in love. She's already asked him for sex. He says no. And, and he puts a safeguard into their relationship. He implements a safeguard. A, a plan, boundaries for their dating relationship. Young people, hear this. Parents, share this with your children. He says, let's put, we're in love, we're laying here. They're probably turned on. That's what happens. They, they may be even make, making out. I don't know. The old Hebrew kiss. Instead of the French kiss. Uh, uh and, and he says, hey, let's have some boundaries so that our relationship will honor God, so that we stay pure the way God designed purity to work. Let's set a precedence for the rest of our relationship, our marriage, our life. Let's set a rule for our marriage. So married people, here's a rule for you. Verse 14, um, 15. Song of Solomon chapter 2, verse 15. He says, catch the foxes. Well, the chorus says this, not Solomon. The chorus says this, which establishes what Solomon believes, I, believe, I think. Catch the foxes for us, the little foxes that are uh, ruining the vineyard while our vineyards are in blossom. Catch the foxes. This is your phrase line for your marriage. Let's catch the foxes. Catch the foxes. What does that mean? Let's catch the foxes in the vineyard so they don't destroy the vineyard when the vineyard is in bloom. It's springtime. In the springtime, the vineyards, the grapes that make wine in the springtime, they would blossom. And out of that blossom comes a cluster of grapes. And out of that grape, we take and harvest and go make wine. That cluster of grapes will not make if the bloom does not bloom. So what would happen is the foxes would would sneak into the vineyard and this bloom tastes good to a fox. It's sweet and it would taste good to a fox. And so the fox would go nibble that, that bloom off. And once the bloom is gone, this, this cluster of grapes wouldn't make. And, and uh, uh, some foxes could ruin a whole vineyard by eating all the blooms and there'd be no grapes. The foxes would sneak in to the vineyard and destroy the vineyard. Satan wants to sneak into your marriage and destroy your marriage. So you need to catch the foxes that come in and eat the blooms of your marriage that keep it from, from blooming and becoming all that you want it to be and fruitful and, and healthy and all those things. What are the foxes in your marriage? Lust, greed, selfishness, Fear, worry, uh, uh, being controlling, 
being prideful, those are the foxes that are in your marriage. And you should be praying with your spouse, Lord, catch the foxes in my marriage that's going to destroy my marriage. They're saying here, Solomon's saying here, catch the foxes of, of impurity, of lust. We're not gonna, we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna go there. We're not gonna be uh, uh, unhealthy. Catch the foxes. Satan seeks to destroy the buds of your marriage so that you don't produce healthy fruit in your marriage. Catch the foxes. Catch the foxes in your marriage. Any other ones? We'll stop right there. Any other foxes in your marriage? Lust, jealousy, pride, selfishness, <clears throat> anger, fear, worry. Anybody think of any other foxes that destroy marriages? In-laws? Money? A fair proof your marriage. That's right, Martha. Busyness. Nice, Nancy. Busyness, the pursuit of stuff, the pursuit of fame, whatever. Mm -mm. Catch the foxes, he says, in the vineyard. Premarital sex, set boundaries. Don't be laying on the couch if you're dating. Don't be laying on the couch together, your bodies horizontal, laying down next to each other, rubbing against each other, making out 12 o'clock at night, no accountability, no one else around. You're going to do bad things. You're going to make mistakes right there. That's a fox. Catch it. We're not going to, we're not going to lay down on the couch. We're not going to make out alone. We're not going to be alone at midnight. <laughs> Don't flirt with it. Catch the fox. Don't be rubbing uh, her back on the skin down low. Don't, you know, whatever it is. Don't be, don't be touching all over your body when you're dating. Purity. Hold purity. Neglect, Melanie says. That's a great fox to catch in your marriage. Don't neglect your spouse. Meet your spouse's needs. Desire to meet your spouse's needs. That's right, Melanie. Catch the foxes. What will happen is Satan will sneak up on you like a fox. And before you know it, three and four years down the road of something, you'll look at each other and go, shh, man. Catch the foxes. Let me pray. We're done for today. Lord, thank you for another uh, time in your word this morning. Thank you for your, the, the word of God. I pray that you'd bless us with courage to do what you instruct us to do, to catch the foxes, to pursue each other, and most of all, Lord, to make each other feel safe. I pray that marriage is all over the world would attempt to make each other feel safe. Safe emotionally, safe physically, safe spiritually, safe relationally. Lord, uh, I pray that we would commit to bringing safety uh, to our spouse. Thanks for loving us. Thank you for Christ on the cross. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, Martha. I appreciate it. Any other questions or comments? If you want a Bible, go to the link in my bio up here or go to hopeshinesministry.com, hopeshinesministry.com. Fill out the form so we will have your email address and your, your mailing address. We'll know where to send it. We'll send it. I'm not going to follow up. Not interested in anything else. Just sending you a Bible. So. 
Good stuff, huh, sissy? Hey, Mim, Mim Mix, good to see you. Uh, all right, Christy, you're welcome. Hey, Sarah, you bet. You're welcome. Roxy, glad, glad you joined. Xanath, did you get booted and you're using a different username? Is that you said thanks, Steve? Uh, is that you, Xanath? That was kind of trolling earlier. Our marriage grew even stronger. It's gone to work. We want to have a wonderful day. You bet. Thank you for the word. You bet. Jorge, join us every morning right here, eight o'clock central, seven o'clock Mountain Standard Time. Thank you. Great message. Uh, all right. Heather, thanks for joining. Glad you were here, Sissy. Uh, feeling safe includes your body too. That's right, Sissy. Debbie, glad you're here. Casey, I'm glad you're able to watch. You're welcome. 24 years married. It helps if you have things in common. We hunt and fish together. Lisa, that's great. Hunt and fish together. Uh, even deeper and stronger when you don't have things in common and you still lo love each other like crazy. Uh, which would have found this study years ago. Thanks. Enjoy your Wednesday. Yep. Last year, the video game. Glad you're watching. Any other questions or comments? Stephanie, thank you. All right. I guess we're done. I hope you guys have a super terrific, great day. Keep on keeping on. We will be back. We'll be back again tomorrow. Bye-bye.